Hello and welcome to a very, very cold Granny's Garden this week. This is like a special edition. It's in response to a call out by RB, the Garden Nanny, and it's hashtag Spring Outdoor Projects 2022. Now the major job on this winter's to-do list was to lift the cypress hedge. On this wall you can see behind me, we had a very, very thick cypress hedge. Half of it was already dead and the other half was heavily infected with ceridium, beyond the point of no return. So we have been putting it off because it is lifting over 80 individual trees and frankly it's quite a big job. So we finally got around to doing it and we finished it about, as I said, about a month and a half ago and now all we've got to do is to reconfigure all of the irrigation system. Now the present irrigation system came with the house and I sort of inherited it and it is what it is. I absolutely hate it. It consists of these prongs which stick up among the vegetation, sometimes half buried, sometimes above, but they're all the same. They've got a very, very rigid prong. This is a very rigid one. It's not sort of flexible at all. It goes right down to the ground level and then right down a further foot underneath where it joins to an half inch tube. This particular area, which you're going to be reconfiguring, it's got three of these rows, one at the front, one somewhere in the middle, and one somewhere at the back. Now, the problem is, when I've been getting in and out, I've knocked several of them. The dogs knock several of them. It is so rigid that all it takes is for a dog to come along and do that, and it breaks, not down here, it breaks right down at the bottom, under soil level. We have spent the last three years digging so many trenches and holes, and repairing it, we're absolutely fed up to the back teeth. So now that we've taken out the cypress hedge, what we're going to be doing is laying a one inch tube the whole way along and putting some hunters which just pop up out of the ground, do their thing and then pop back down into the ground. And that way you can't kick them, step on them or do anything else when they're not in use. So that's the idea. Quite a job and it's also quite a considerable length. This is over 40 meters from right down there. It's going to go right the full way back. It's going to run along the top of this wall, behind where the wood is, behind where the oil tank is, and then it'll run along this cypress hedge, which is in very nice condition, and then join into this. That's the idea anyway. So it is quite a considerable distance. But because it's a one inch tube, it'll take it. And the idea is we're going to put these hunters, we'll put about eight which cover an area of about 2.5 to 3 metres each one. This is the material we're going to be needing. This is a one inch tube. We've got these little like clamps which will be inserted along that tube. And you can see there's a hole, a smaller hole there. And you'll drill through that hole and that'll be where the water is accessed. And then into this little thread will go, where is it? One of these, which in turn will go into one of these. And then this will be at ground level. And then when the irrigation is turned on, the inside of this will just pop up about 10 centimetres, uh, which is about four inches, do its job and then pop back down. If that's the level of the soil, pop back down. And that is it. Now with the previous irrigation system, where the water was actually working, you were getting quite nice dense vegetation. We've got vinca here and we've got mixed in with English ivy, but it's very inconsistent. As soon as you get pockets where it doesn't reach, automatically you get bare ground and worse still, you leave it open for invasion by this wretched grass. These just don't have the pressure, but very close to where each prong is, you get lovely dense vegetation. Hopefully the installation of the hunter is going to resolve this problem because it does give a very even, consistent flow. If you're wondering what the yellow plant is, it's scorpion vetch. Native to this mountain area.
while we were working on the reconfiguration of the irrigation system, I decided to take the bull by the horns and once and for all, finally redesign the last area of the garden, which up until now has been left to one side, very much untouched and very much unloved. Remember that this is year three of a three year plan to recover and redesign a very neglected garden. I've been very, very busy up until now. I've had to design and create a new perennial and bulb border, a new shrub border, a new woodland border, a new rose border. And before we could plant anything, the old things, dead, diseased, dying, had to be ripped out by the root balls. There was vines crawling up the fences and out onto the footpath. All of that had to be removed before we could even begin to try and create. So now there's only one area of the garden left, which is the embankment. It's quite a steep embankment. It's about five foot in a difference in level between my neighbour's garden and my garden. And it had 80 cypress, very thick cypress trees growing. So it's absolutely full, chock-a-block full of roots. It's very, very dry. And worse still, when it rains, and oh boy, in the mountains, does it rain. The topsoil flows down the embankment, flows out the driveway, out into the street, and goodness knows where it goes from then on. But we've got a serious problem here. I've been looking at it for about the last two years, and finally, as I said, time to take the bull by the horns and get something done about it. So what are we going to do? We're going to terrace us. In keeping with the rest of the house, we will be using train sleepers, like I have here in the bull border, three layers high. I mean, just look at what the previous owners were using to contain all the soil. Bits of plastic. I mean, for goodness sake, of course it breaks off. You're talking about tons of soil here coming down the embankment. So as with every other part of the garden that we've worked on, the first thing you have to decide is what stays and what goes. My pine tree is staying, obviously, with my nesting boxes. The next one is a box elder, which I absolutely adore. That's staying. Also staying is a silver maple, which is a very, very sick tree when I arrived. I coppiced it in order to recover, and it's now going into its third year. It's just about leafing out, and it's absolutely gorgeous. And that won't be affected because the first terrace is going to be at this level, at ground level, and the next one is going to be just behind. See it better from this angle. You can see this little concrete little border here. So the iron rods that maintain the sleepers will go right next to, right behind this. Then you're going to have sleepers going all the way down the first level to about 45 centimeters, which is about uh, just under two foot. And then level with this area, you're going to have the second terrace going down. So it's going to be one, up, one. That's going to be a terrace all the way down. And I think it's going to look absolutely gorgeous. But first of all, we've got to get rid of, yes, do I dare say it, English ivy. This time I've also got vinca as well. So that's got to go as well. And meanwhile, we're going to be pulling out all of this awful irrigation system that I hated anyway. So that's no harm done. But there's quite a bit of work ahead because Miguel is now digging up all these wretched trees that we don't want and sh large shrubs. He's now covering in the craters that were left. And then we'll set about lifting the English ivy and, of course, the vinca. And just before I finish this video, I'm just going to give a quick flit around with the camera these beautiful bulbs that are on display now. Absolutely lovely.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you to Garden Annie for giving me the shout out and giving me the opportunity to get some work done. Although, as I said initially, it was just going to be reconfiguration of an irrigation system and you've set the ball rolling for something a lot, lot bigger. It'll take a bit of time, but we're definitely going to get it done this year because I said this is the last year of a three-year plan. This has got to be done this year at some stage. We were going to do it later in the year, but it's been brought forward and it's always an opportunity to plant more. So I'll see you all next week here in Gunny's Garden. Bye-bye now.